I'm not going to derive um, d time desynchronization based on distance in special relativity. Um, and this will come into play a lot in, uh, in the, the Lorentz transformation for time, and you'll see why. <clears throat> Start with the thought experiment. Let's say we have a person over here recording their own time and a train. They're watching a train go by that has two clocks on it like this. going at velocity v. Okay? Now a person on this train wants to wants to synchronize the um, the clocks so that a person standing on this on the train in the, the reference frame of the train wants to see this clock running at the same time as this clock. So what they do since the clocks are separated uh, by distance they can't just turn them on. What they do is they put a a light bulb in the middle of the train such that the distance from this light to this clock distance from this light to this clock is the same um, because these clocks are photoreceptive what they're going to do is they're going to turn the light on and it's going to shoot out light waves photons <coughs> towards these two clocks and a person standing uh, in the train would see the light waves hit the two clocks at the same time and they would be running at the same time and be synchronized. However, in, um, in special relativity, uh, this isn't the case because what was actually measured and discovered is that the speed of light is absolute and independent on reference frame. So this light beam would be going out at C, and this light beam would be going out at C in the opposite direction, <coughs> regardless of velocity of the train or this person's perspective whatever um, it would the, it, it, the, this speed of this beam would not be C plus the velocity of the train and <clears throat> the velocity of this light beam would not be the difference between the velocity of the train and the velocity of light because uh, that, that, that's just the principle of relativity that light is absolutely independent of reference frame so now in this next stage where the train is in this position because it's moved, because it's got a velocity, a certain time has gone by, <coughs> we see this, or this person sees this. A person in um, that train itself would not see this, a person in the train itself would see that, because uh, from their perspective in that train, the speed of light, or the light beams would be going out at the speed of light and strike the clocks at the same time, but from this person's perspective, this is what he sees. He would see the light hit this clock first, and this clock second, and this this clock this clock would begin running first, and there'd be a desynchronization between the times. And we can calculate this mathematically. And how we do this <coughs> is we say that the length of this train is l naught, and uh, the length that this person sees this train to be is l naught times squared one minus b squared over c squared. That's the length of traction. And then we say the distance from this clock to this light, and this light to this clock is L over 2 times the square root of 1 minus V squared C squared. Simple enough. And now there's another way to calculate this distance using time. Watch. We say that um, uh, if everything was transparent except for the clocks, we would see this. This clock. And this clock going at this vo these velocities. And the light beams going at these velocities. So we could say that <coughs> the distance from this clock to the, the light in the middle would be V plus C times the time that it takes um, the two to meet, we'll call that T A, and the, uh, the, and, and the reason for that is that if because the velocity of the clock is going this direction the, and the velocity of the light is going in this direction so the additive, it's like if I'm going at riding my bike at 5 meters per second and there's a car coming at me at 10 meters per second I'm going to see the car coming at me at 15 meters per second and we just take that 15 meters per second and multiply by the um, the time that it took for us to meet I figure out how far we were apart at the beginning just like over here, since they're going in the same direction we subtract them we say it would be C minus V times T, let's call it TB, the time that it takes then to, to 
uh, reach each other is the distance. And that's because if I was traveling at five meters per second on my bike and there was a car going past me now in the same direction, 15 meters per second, I would see the car going by at 15 minus 5 at 10 meters per second. If I took that 10 meters per second and multiplied by the time that it took us to meet, I would get the distance that we were apart originally. Okay? So these two are equal and they equal this. So let's let's write that. Let's say L naught over 2 equals C plus V. Oh, whoa, sorry. L naught over 2 times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared equals TA times C plus V, which also equals TB times C minus V. And now let's solve for TA and TB. We get TA equals 1 over C plus V times L naught over 2 times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared, just dividing, plus, just dividing by C plus V. And TB equals 1 over C minus V times L naught over 2 times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay, I'm going to erase this. Now it's just mathematics. Keep this thought experiment in your mind. We say the desynchronization between the clocks is the difference between the times, TB minus TA, because if it took if um, it took five seconds to hit one clock and ten seconds to hit the other clock, then the the second clock will be running um, at a difference of five seconds, ten minus five, would uh, and there would always be a five seconds lapse or, or desynchronization of time between the two clocks. So we just subtract. Them. We can take out the L0 over 2 from both of them times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. And now, what does it become? 1 over C minus V minus 1 over C plus V. TB minus TA. Okay? Now I'm going to multiply, I'm going to just going to simplify this. Multiply this, the top by C plus V and the bottom by C plus V. Multiply the top by C minus V and the bottom by C minus V. Um, it's basically like a multiplying fraction. Um, multiplying by 1, just to simplify this, I get this equals C plus V over C squared minus V squared minus C minus V over C squared minus V squared times L naught over 2 times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared, which becomes c plus v minus c, when I distribute this negative, it becomes minus c plus v over c squared minus v squared times l naught over 2 times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Uh, the c's cancel, and that becomes 2v, so it becomes 2v over c squared minus v squared times l naught over 2 times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, and the 2's cancel, okay? And now, <clears throat> So I'm just going to leave this as over here. It's going to be V over C squared minus V squared times L naught times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Okay? Erase over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply just this part over here, or it doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to multiply by 1 over C squared over... 1 over c squared. This is to simplify, you'll see why. So I get v over c squared over, when I distribute this 1 over c squared, I get 1 minus v squared over c squared times l naught times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, which can be written as v times l naught over, here, I'll, I'll, I'll have to write it. Can be written as v times l naught over c squared over. I can write this as the square root of one minus v squared over c squared times the square root of one minus v squared over c squared. Right? <coughs> All multiplied by one minus v squared over c squared. The square root of that, and then this cancels, and I get v l naught over c squared over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, or v l naught over c squared times gamma. This is the desynchronization um, 
between clocks that are moving. Basically, uh, you take the velocity times the, the distance between them, their own reference frame, divided by the speed of light squared times gamma. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And you will get the time desynchronization between the clocks as one person would perceive it in a different reference frame, looking into one reference frame. So our person that was over here would perceive looking into the the clock, uh, looking at the clocks in another reference frame. In the re in the reference frame of the train, uh, there would be no desynchronization. But from the perspective of the person that's not moving, the clocks look desynchronized, and this comes into play in um, it more in the Lorentz transformation, and I'll show that to you in my next video.